value viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. Okay, so quite frankly, I can do an hour plus long video on the nickel plate road and still not get to the total story of them. So my nickname for this railroad are the Railroad Raiders, and that's simply because they remind me of the old John Madden, Al Davis era of NFL football with the Oakland Raiders. I mean, put it this way, their very existence came from an antitrust lawsuit against the New York Central Railroad that separated the Nickel Plate Road from that railroad in particular. And once the Nickel Plate Road became a separate entity, their business practices were quite aggressive. And generally speaking, their operations weren't generally well liked by surrounding railroads either. There's just so much to talk about this railroad, so I just broke this video down into just doing their most famous uh, locomotive type, which was the 284 Berkshire locomotive, of which they made the type the most popular. Enjoy the video. Okay, so we can trace the history of the 284 Berkshire to the mid-1920s, and that's when Lima's will worded uh, for the New York Central's Boston and Albany line. It was essentially an expansion of an already successful 282 Mikado type and intended for moderately fast freight service in heavily graded territory. And when this new 284 type proved worthy of his task, the Boston and Albany ordered a fleet of 284s and the type was appropriately named for the Boston and Albany's Berkshire Crossing. Really, the Berkshire's success could be traced to its large firebox and boiler which supplied ample quantities of steam, enabling the locomotive to operate at sustained speed even when climbing a long grade. In the type's first few years, the Berkshire was built with 63-inch drivers, which actually limited its speed uh, potential. A few lines bought the 284s in this original configuration, including Boston and Albany's neighbor to Boston and Maine, which also crossed the Berkshires. Flatline Illinois Central purchased Lima's original 284 prototype and acquired its own fleet of similarly proportioned Berkshires for its heavy freight services. So, in the late 1920s, the Berkshire evolved into a new form. The Van Swerigen brothers of Cleveland, Ohio have been assembling a network of railroads in the Midwest. And they were doing this rather aggressively. And part of the brothers' network empire was the Midwestern bridge line called the Nickel Plate Road, which connected Buffalo with Chicago and St. Louis by way of several significant cities in Ohio and Indiana, including their hometown. So, at the end of 1926, the Van Swergens asked one of their top operations men, John Burnett, to give up his presidency of the Nickel Plate Road in order to take charge of the Erie Railroad which had been one of the recent lines to enter the Van Swerigen fold. One of Burnett's first moves was to modernize Erie's locomotive fleet, which is then characterized by a collection of poorly maintained antiques. And Burnett was very enamored with the potential of the Berkshire-type locomotive, and he ordered a fleet of 284s from Alco for the Erie Railroad. And these locomotives advanced the Berkshire line altogether. And one of the basic changes to the Berkshire design was raising the 63-inch drivers to 70-inch drivers, which substantially sped up freight service delivery. They also incorporated the use of precision wheel balancing techniques to minimize the destructive effects of dynamic augment, which was the pounding effect of reciprocating locomotives on the railroad tracks themselves, which caused damage. The Erie's Berkshire also were 30 tons heavier than the original Elko design and that was partly attributed to the fact that Erie ran on 6 foot gauge track. This new Erie design Berkshire set a precedence and standard of which all models were based on later. And ultimately the Erie assembled a fleet of 105 Berkshires which is easily the largest in the United States. And despite the success of the Alco Berkshires, Erie's later orders were split between Alco's competitors Lima and Baldwin. And this gave Erie the rare distinction of having examples of one type of locomotive from each of the three major builders. The success of the Erie Berkshire led fellow Van Swerigen Road, Chesapeake and Ohio to adapt and expand the type into the 2104 Texas type, which was the next logical progression from the 284 Berkshire. And just like the Erie Berkshires, these locomotives were extremely successful and used large drivers for relatively fast freight operation. Then in 1933, Burnett returned to the Nickel Plate Road and used his experience on the Erie to improve the Nickel Plate Road steam locomotive fleet. And by this time, the Van Swerigen lines had established a joint motive power design group called the Advisory Mechanical Committee, which was in charge of procuring the best standard designs for different railroads. Burnett encouraged the design of the 284, and the AMC came up with one that embodied many of the best features of the Erie's 284 and the Chesapeake and Ohio's 210 
and the first of these machines were built by Alco in 1934 and designated as Class S. And these new Berkshires were numbered 700 to 714. The S-Class locomotives use 69-inch drivers which are slightly smaller than the 70-inch drivers that the Erie locomotives had used. The S-Class also used a small bore, long stroke cylinder design combined with ample boiler and high working pressure to produce a more compact machine with high performance potential. The first 15 Berkshires satisfied the nickel plate roads motive power needs during the depression when traffic levels were relatively low. However, following the advent of World War II, the Nickel Plate Road, like all American railroads, found itself needing more motive power. So in 1942 and 1943, Lima built 23 Berkshires based on the design of its earlier machines. Lima followed with another 30 Berkshires in 1944. Both orders of wartime 284s were designated as Class S2 and numbered in sequence after the original Class S 284s and after the war when most lines began to order new diesels and were largely abandoning steam, nickel plate bucked the trend by placing one last order for Berkers which were 10 Class S3s built by Lima in 1949. Nickel Plate Road's number 779 had the distinction of being not only the last Lima steam locomotive built, but the last domestic 284 constructed as well. The Nickel Plate's Berkshires had a characteristic appearance that had common qualities with many AMC designs. The locomotives were noted for a solid, well-balanced design and featured such modern attributes as an extra-large Sam Dome with a railroad's initials painted on it in gold lettering. Also, 12 external sand line feeds, six on each side of the locomotive, radiated from the dome. A number of railroads, including fellow Van Swergen lines, Pierre Marquette, Wheeling, and eventually even the CNO, bought 284s based on the nickel plates. And it should be noted that the Chesapeake and Ohio's version of the Berkshire locomotives were always named Kanawas, rather than Berkshire. And at that time, three other railroads bought into the nickel plates design of the 284 Berkshire, which were the the Louisville National Railroad, the Richmond, Fredericksburg, and Potomac Railroads, and, you guessed it, the Virginian. The Nickel Plate Road assigned its Berkshires to fast freights between Chicago, Cleveland, and Buffalo, and in the later years strengthened this infrastructure to allow them to run on its line to St. Louis. And it should be noted here, and not coincidentally, that much of the Nickel Plate Road's line was built adjacent to the New York Central's water level route. In the mid-1950s, Nickel Plate Road's Berkshires gained fame by outpacing New York Central's diesels on parallel tracks. The Nickel Plate was also one of the very few American lines that hauled piggyback flat cars behind steam. Intermodal transport was just catching on as railroads were disposing of their steam fleets and the two technologies, each associated with different eras, over, only overlapped by a few years. Nickel Plate was among the last American lines to operate mainline freight behind steam, finally switching to diesels in the summer of 1958. A number of Nickel Plate's handsome Berkshires were preserved and two have become famous for their excursion work. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, Nickel Plate Road's number 759 operated a number of public excursions and even hauled a few freight trains on the Erie and Lackawanna in Western Maryland. Today, number 759 is part of the Steamtown Collection in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Nickel Plate Road's number 765, based in Fort Wayne, Indiana, has operated excursions in the Midwest and East, including over some of the, its former Nickel Plate stomping grounds. The Nickel Plate Road itself only barely survived the steam era. In 1964, the railroad lost its identity when it was bought by the Norfolk and Western. Today, formal Nickel Plate lines are operated by the gigantic Norfolk and Southern one of the largest railroad companies in the East. And with that, the following specifications apply to the Nickel Plate Roads 284 Berkshire type locomotive designated S3, engine number 779. The number 779's manufacture date was May 13th of 1949. The main driver size was 69 inches. Its leading truck wheel diameter was 36 inches. Its trailing truck wheel diameter was 43 inches. The overall length of the locomotive was 100 feet 8 and 3 quarter inches. The height of the locomotive was 15 feet 8 inches. The adhesive weight was 264,300 pounds. The locomotive weight was 444,300 pounds. The total weight 
with the tender was 808,820 pounds. The fuel type was coal. The fuel capacity was 44,000 tons or 22 short tons. The water capacity was 22,000 US gallons. The boiler was 89 inches diameter by 42 feet in length. The boiler pressure was 245 PSI. The cylinders were two at 25 inch by 34 inch high pressure. Maximum speed was 70 miles an hour. The tractive effort was 64,135 pounds. Factor of adhesion was 4.12 and the operating class was S3. And with that, I'll wrap up this video and I shall thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's content, please hit the like button. And also, if you've not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button as both the like and subscribe help my channel grow immensely. And turn on all of your notifications if you want to see everything that I upload, which is one or two videos a day. And if you don't want to use the super things feature, you can help support the channel on our website at nickelplatelimited at etsy.com. And we thank you once again.